here at Back to the Wild. And I know you got to learn about box turtles yesterday, which are usually a favorite with the kids here at Back to the Wild. Um, but today we're going to learn about everybody's favorite animal, the snake. <laughs> um, what we have here, we have our black rat snake and we also have our fox snake. The black rat snake is, of course, the black one in here, and the eastern fox snake is the brownish one with the black spots and the kind of coppery colored head kind of moving around over here. I do want to point out, just in case, these guys do not live in this aquarium. They have a large exhibit that they live in, but this is just for our purposes today to make it easier to see them, and I will be getting them out later on for you guys to see. Um, you know, a lot of people don't like snakes, and that's perfectly okay. You don't have to like every animal in nature. I'm not particularly fond of spiders, but just because we don't like something doesn't mean it deserves to die. And snakes have a really important purpose. You know, a lot of us here uh, don't really care for having mice in our homes, right? Because they can spread diseases, things like that. Outside, mice are just fine, but in our homes, we don't want them there. Snakes do a really great job of eliminating a lot of the mice that would otherwise be in your homes eating your food and uh, causing chaos. <laughs> so they're pretty good to have around. On top of that, when they catch a mouse, do you think they stop to pick all the ticks off before they eat it? Nope. <laughs> and mice are a big carrier of ticks. So these guys help prevent diseases that mice spread and they help prevent diseases that pests like ticks spread. So they're actually really good to have around. It doesn't mean you need to snuggle with one. <laughs> we actually recommend if you see a snake in the wild to just leave it alone. Um, just walk away. They don't really want to be around you any more than you want to be around them. Now, with these snakes in here, the most common question we get is, is it poisonous? And the truth is, very few snakes in the world are poisonous because there's a big difference between being poisonous and being venomous. So in Ohio, we have three venomous snakes, but we have zero poisonous snakes. <laughs> so we have um, the uh, timber rattler, we have the copperhead, and we have the massasauga rattlesnake. And uh, timber rattlers and copperheads are found more in southern Ohio, whereas massasaugas can be found in this area, but stumbling across one and being bitten by one about your chances of winning the lottery. <laughs> they're pretty rare to come across, and they're very specific to wetlands habitats. That's where they like to live. They're also very small, and they don't deliver enough venom and a bite to kill a healthy child. So if you were to come across one, and you were to be bitten by one, make sure you play the lottery, because you might win. <laughs> but also, still go to the hospital. Don't walk it off. Um, but you're incredibly unlikely to die from a bite from a massasauga rattlesnake. Now here, these guys are what we call non-venomous. So venom means that the animal is going to bite you or somehow inject the venom into your system. Whereas poisonous means you have to eat it, kind of like a salamander. There are lots of poisonous salamanders out there or a poison dart frog, you'd have to eat it. We do have one snake in Ohio, the garter snake, that eats a lot of toads. And when they eat toads, they can become poisonous uh, because they take the poison from the toads and kind of incorporate it into their own systems. Um, but they're only poisonous when they're eating those toads. Kind of the same for poison dart frogs. They're only poisonous when they're eating a specific type of ant that they find out in the jungles. Um, same thing, they take that toxin and make it part of themselves. Now these guys are harmless. They have teeth, they can bite, but so do squirrels, so do cute little bunnies, you know. Animals bite to protect themselves, and snakes are no different. They're just not cute when they do it, <laughs> so we have a little bit uh, less tolerance for them, unfortunately. Um, a lot of people believe the only good snake is a dead snake, but remember, that is not true. Snakes are very important to have around. Now, what I want to talk about with these guys are some of the amazing adaptations so I'm going to be getting out our resident fox snake. Now we have these snakes, you know, we talk a lot about how all of the wildlife ambassadors we have are permanently disabled in some way or another. Well, unfortunately with reptiles and amphibians, sometimes people try to make pets out of them and they keep them in their homes where they can be exposed to viruses, fungi, bacteria, different things that if we let them go, they could introduce that to wild populations. So if they've been in a captive setting with store-bought animals, uh, we are not allowed to release them to help protect the rest of them out in the wild. Now, eastern fox snakes have kind of a coppery colored head, and when they're frightened, they can also vibrate their tails, although this guy probably won't do it, he's been with us for a long time, but when they're scared, they can vibrate their tails, and it sounds an awful lot like they have a rattle, but you can see, no rattle, just a nice little point right there. 
But in dry leaves, rocks, stones, it is a very convincing impersonation of a rattlesnake. While a fox snake is harmless, rattlesnakes, of course, are not. <laughs> they are venomous. And so this guy, by imitating or mimicking, so he mimics, uh, which basically just means he pretends to be <laughs> something else. So he mimics a rattlesnake in order to scare off or intimidate his predators. If I were a coyote and I wanted to eat a fox snake, I would have no fear. I would just gobble him up in one bite, probably. <laughs> but if I thought he was a rattlesnake, I would have second thoughts and I would probably run away. So this is a great way to trick their predators. Now they do have a coppery colored head and that makes some people think that these guys are copperheads. <laughs> we do not have copperheads in the northern part of Ohio, so you're not likely to find one up here. Uh, I've been working here for about 17 years and I've dealt with hundreds of phone calls about rattlesnakes and copperheads and every time it's been a fox snake. <laughs> so these guys, like I said, they're very beneficial and they're harmless. Now snakes have some other very cool adaptations. For one, you'll notice he's sticking his tongue out a lot, which sometimes people think that means that they're being aggressive, but that's not the case at all. Um, that's kind of how snakes see the world. So you and I, we catch scent particles with our noses, <laughs> and snakes catch them with their tongues. They have two holes up in the roof of their mouth called a Jacobson's organ, which is why a snake's tongue is forked. It's not because, you know, they're evil or anything like that. Um, those two little forks flick out there. They catch all the little molecules of scent floating around in the air, and they stick those to that forked tongue up into the, that Jacobson's organ, and they're able to tell if there's food nearby, if there are predators nearby. It's kind of how they get a sense of what's around them. And if they catch the molecules of a mouse on this side of their tongue, they know that the mouse is over there. And if they catch it on this side, they know it's over there. So having a forked tongue is pretty beneficial. And if you're one of those people that think forked tongues are evil, well, hummingbirds also have forked tongues. <laughs> Very forked tongues to help them get deeper into flowers and get the nectar that they want. So uh, forked tongues don't really mean much. It's just a really neat adaptation that some animals have that help them to survive. Another thing you'll notice is that he is not blinking his eyes. And that is because snakes do not have eyelids. <laughs> he might be getting a little close there, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, instead, snakes have a lens cap or a specialized scale that covers their eye and it's transparent. So it's kind of like a built-in permanent pair of goggles. And uh, what that does is it protects his eyes when he's slithering along the ground. Well, you know, when he catches a mouse, he, the mouse doesn't want to cuddle with him. He's going to bite and scratch. And so it protects his eyes from being injured from his prey as well. And a neat thing with snakes, when they're getting ready to shed, because of course snake scales don't grow with them, <laughs> they don't stretch very much. So snakes, as they get bigger, they shed their entire skin. And if you take a look right here at the tip of my finger, it almost looks like a little plastic bubble right there. That's that lens cap that was covering his eye. And when snakes are getting ready to shed, that lens cap will get kind of a milky, opaque color, and it's hard for them to see, which snakes in that, that period of time are a little more bitey than usual because they can't see very well. So it's a little scary if you can't see and some big, huge creatures trying to pick you up. So um, they can be a little bit more aggressive during those times. Um, but these guys, once they shed their skin, they'll have bright new shiny scales with a little bit of room to grow right underneath. <laughs> so pretty neat adaptation they have. Uh, another really cool thing they can do is stretch their jaws open. So this is one a lot of people know about, but a lot of people have some misconceptions about people think they dislocate their jaw, all kinds of different things. Um, but actually, snakes have an extra bone in the back of their jaw on each side. And on top of that, the front of their jaw, so front of our jaw right here, our lower jaw, is fused together. But for a snake, it's actually two separate pieces with a little tendon ligament uh, system right in between there that helps them to stretch their mouths nice and wide. <laughs> in fact, um, many species of snakes can, can swallow things five to seven times the size of their head which is important when you need to eat a lot in one sitting. <laughs> so this guy, uh, with snakes, they tend to be bolus eaters, which means that they're going to eat a lot of food at once and then go for a long time without eating. So for our snakes, for example, we typically feed them every two weeks. <laughs> so that would be pretty great if you only had to eat every two weeks, right? Um, 
But the reason why is because snakes are what we call ectotherms. They used to call ectotherms cold-blooded. We don't really like that word though because it implies that they're somehow mean. You know, they always say they did it in cold blood. So we, we prefer to say ectotherm. <laughs> you and I, we are endotherms. That means we produce our own body heat which is why we have to eat so much. Producing your own body heat takes a lot of caloric energy. You need a lot of calories to do that. But with ectotherms, these guys don't have to do that because they get their body temperature through behavior. So when he's cold, he goes out in the sun. When he's cool, he gets in the shade. And there's a lot more complicated things that they do to maintain the body temperature, but we won't get too much into that. Um, but because he doesn't have to produce his own body temperature, his own body heat, uh, he doesn't have to eat as much. So it's a pretty good uh, trade-off there for these guys. Does mean that they have to kind of uh, hide away all winter, but hey, who doesn't want to sleep all winter? <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy back in his aquarium here. And as always, if you have any questions at all, anything you're curious about with these animals that we didn't answer during the videos, please feel free to leave your questions in the comments down below. And we will do our best to make sure we keep up with you guys and all of that. And we're gonna do our best to keep up with these videos to give you guys some fun things. And uh, I know if you saw my post earlier today, um, we're also going to try to do some other things to make up for the fact that we're not going to have, you know, big programs out here, maybe giving you guys tours of the facilities, things like that. So make sure you stay tuned because we'll announce those in advance so everybody can prepare for it. And thank you guys and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye!